now. Oh, you on there? Yep. Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. We're here for the latest edition of the Sports Fanatic News Hockey Show as we're going to dive into, as it looks like we're already might be having some technical uh, issues here, uh, as we're going to be diving into the awards here for the NHL as uh, E-Money is already frozen. But how are you doing today? <laughs> oh, wow, I'm frozen. Uh, I was hoping not to be frozen. I just... You're back in. Okay, sweet. I was going to say I wanted to show off the, the new smile. I finally got a front tooth again. So, um, anyway, so it's all good, though. Yeah, it's, this is my first time being back on the show in months. I was from, like, November to end of February, I was busy coaching a swim team, and I – well, that didn't work. Oh, I didn't know you did that. Oh, that's yeah, that's why I was, like, MIA for a while because I was just so busy with that, and um, that already took up a lot of my time as it is. So, anyways um, – yeah, what 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 word did you want to go into first? The Jack Adams. We might as well. That's it. Yeah, we might as well just dive into the coach of the year first because we can kind of go over that one. Probably that that's not one you're going to probably dive into for hours on end. Yeah. So who would be your Jack Adams? Um. Well, first off, I just want to say that like I feel like most of these awards are really hard to call. Okay. Oh, I mean, there's a few that are wrapped up. Like, we all know Shesterkin's going to win the Vesna, and that was pretty much decided, like, three months ago with how healthy of a season he's had. Um, uh, but Jack Adams, I'm going to go Daryl Sutter. I just think he's coached an amazing year. A lot of his players have had career highs. Like, Manchapani pretty much came out of nowhere. Um, I mean, that top line's incredible. And I don't think last year. Um, so I think that's – in their division, uh, they'll finish roughly around second in the West, close to it. I mean, we know Colorado's going to have. Yeah, Colorado definitely will be a good team too. So, so Flames will finish like second or fourth in the West, but they'll win. They'll win their division. I mean, yeah, the Pacific Division's not that great, but I mean, I just think the Flames have had such a wonderful season. Uh, they've really had turn things around. I didn't think they were going to be this good this year. This year no, I didn't think so. Started. Yeah, I didn't think the Flames were going to be this good. I thought the Flames were going to have a chance to be good this year, but not to the oomph degree of 104 point season already, plus 82 different. Like, they got some ridiculous stats going with that team. Plus, when you watch them, they look brilliant right. out there on the ice. And Goudreau's back to being Johnny Hockey version of Goudreau. So that that also goes a long yeah. way, and they seem to show no signs of wanting to get – before it was, oh, look, we're going to move on from Johnny Goudreau. And I was like, I swear to God, if you don't re-sign Johnny Goudreau, right. I will kill you. Like, <laughs> so it's a completely different uh, shift. Yeah, there, yeah. <laughs> uh, which is funny to see. But the guy I give it to, uh, just from the perspective of the fact that I didn't even see this team being a surefire playoff team, and – I, I think they've been much better progressed quicker than other teams have expected. I'm actually going to say a wild card, an oddball one, Todd McClellan, because of how good the Kings have done. I didn't see the – one, I didn't see Jonathan Quick. And I, and I love Jonathan Quick. He's one of my favorite goals. At the time I worked for the Reading Royals, he was a Reading Royals great, Jonathan Quick. Hats off to him. But he had a, one of his best end-of-career seasons this year. Then uh, Pedersen had a bad start which is when Quick picked it up for him. And then when Quick started kind of going back to being later career Quick, Pedersen then turned into what he was the year prior, being able to at least be a solid goaltender. Where the, the Kings also play, when, the, when they have everybody healthy, the Kings to me play a very good defensive structure. The only reason they're a minus three differential is their defense injuries have kicked their behind this year. Like yeah. Walker's out for the entire season. They've had others that have been out for multitudes of games. Like, and Dowdy's out for the year. Yeah, Dowdy's out for the year, yeah. So, like, if it wasn't for that, and that's also why, for me, he deserves all the credit, McClellan, you got this team, right. no matter what injury it went through, to with these young prospects that a lot of people did not think are fully ready yet to perform well enough to get you yep. to where you're at now. So that's why, to me, I picked McClellan. And you also yeah. picked the guy I was going to have as my number one pick, so I couldn't pick him. So there's also uh, you, you can pick the same person as me. I don't, <laughs> I don't care; it doesn't bother me. I mean, we can have. I just, I just like mixing it up because then they get to hear like I, if I have a second person, I'll probably mix it up because then people get to hear like different reasoning, so to speak. Yeah, 
It's good. It's good for, like to listen to like a different perspective too. I mean, I can, I mean, I, I can see that argument too. Like, I mean, I don't think that Jack Adams is set in stone or anything. Um, no, not at all. Yeah. No, no. But I think the next one um, that would be cool to go on to. Um, did we want to do the Gregory? Did you want to talk about the general manager? I don't care about that. You don't care about that? Okay. Nah, so, I, I forgot that was even a thing. All right. No, I just figured because that would be the best time to do it since we talked about the coach of the year. But we don't have to do that. Last year was yeah. Lou Amarello. Uh, yeah. We can uh, <laughs> the Calder then because the Calder, there's actually a couple cats, two of which are on the same team, <laughs> that yeah. could potentially uh, win the Calder trophy. Uh, one of which is on Toronto and an overager. So we'll see how that affects them. But uh, who do you have as your Calder? Yeah, I had a really hard time picking Calder, honestly. And I think it could go between like four or five different people. I mean, yeah. um, I mean, Zegers could be on there. Um, he, he's probably the most exciting because of how unique he is as a player, the stuff that he can do. And I guess also can, it's not that good. Um, Detroit had a couple good rookies in Cider and Raymond. Um, and then Jeremy Swayman on the Bruins, he's had a pretty good year too. Uh, I think I would lean towards bunting. He assists 23 goals, 63 points, um, just top three in those categories as a rookie. I, I really don't even know. I mean, if he doesn't get it, that's fine. If he gets it, that's fine, whatever. It's, it's yeah. close. It's very, very close. Yeah, no, I'm with you because I think the colder this year is kind of smack on with everybody that I'm not going to be mad who they give it to because I feel like it's kind of a – like between Raymond, Bunting, uh, Sider, even Swayman, who you th- I don't think a goalie will get it because it's just rare and they kind of have to be yeah, astronomically yeah. ridiculous. Right, but I do right. think he deserves to be in that conversation. Uh, like I, to me – and then obviously Z. Uh, but to me, it – doesn't uh, matter because I think whoever gets it deserves it. There's your Raymond's been a freak of nature and a great player to watch. Yeah. I mean, let me put it this way. Coming into this season, when I – because now it's ESPN Plus, not NHL TV anymore that everything's on. When I yeah. got my ESPN Plus, I did not think the Detroit Red Wings would be one of the teams I watched the most. So the fact yeah. that Morris Sider – I don't care that they didn't make the playoffs. They were still one of the more fun teams to watch, and they're going to have something special in the next year or two. Sider and Raymond – were really fun to watch. The way that Sider controls the play on defense is spectacular on both yeah. both zones too. And then Raymond is not afraid to try anything. He might not succeed when he tries that move, right. but the fact that you're that young and you're not afraid to try anything that speaks volumes for as you grow into your body and grow into a player. So, so I would say I'm between the like I agree. Uh, Bunning, you, you took my first choice again because I don't agree with the whole overage <laughs> argument. Uh, so I think Bunning, like Paul Bizanet loves Michael Bunning. I listen to Spitting Chicklets. Biz is obsessed with him. Um, I'm with him. I think uh, Bunning should win it. But between that, uh, like I just explained the two in Detroit, I'm perfectly fine if either of them win because I think both all three deserve it a lot. But I also just would like to see Bunning win from the perspective of it would get rid of that stupid stigma on not giving it to overage rookies which sometimes the only reason they're overage rookies is because of their academics and the reason they want to stay in school longer. And that's yeah. why they come up as quick. But you, you shouldn't hold that against somebody. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I forgot he was 26. It's so strange how that works. Well, the way the NHL does the rookie stuff is really weird. Like, you could be a rookie for two seasons, but as long as you didn't play X amount of games, Ex- like it's well, weird. Yeah. It, it's weird to say, like, oh, yeah, Matt Murray won two cups as a rookie. Like, that's... It's just strange. Um, but, um, yeah, it's crazy. We have two of the same first choices in a row pretty much. That's cool. But, yeah, I mean, you can make a case for others. And um, I tell you what, Detroit is going to be good again within the next, like, two – within the next, like, two years, I think they'll be a playoff team again. Oh, I don't I've know. Been watching them a lot for them because I loved watching them this year that I'm just going to try to follow this. Because I love following prospects, honestly, sometimes more than – like, I love following the NHL, but prospects is kind of my thing I just love. They have so many good ones that they're a team that I just continue to want to watch going forward that even if they don't make the playoffs next year, they're still going to be a fun team to watch with how they grow. And then they're going to continue. And then they have one of the best prospect goalies. Now, I don't think Nadelkovic is bad. I think he just had some moments this year of not being as sharp. But I do think Sebastian Kosa is ridiculous. So as he continues to develop, you also have him. So, yeah. Um, 
Who do you want to give the uh, Lindsay to? That see for me, it's always tough with this because you either sometimes give it to the more offensive guy. Where McDavid's great, and I love Connor McDavid. I love watching him offensively. The issue I have with Connor McDavid is the same issue I had with Alexander Ovechkin when he was young that I don't have with him anymore. And now I went from really liking Alexander Ovechkin to him being one of my favorite players in the history of hockey because he committed to both ends. Where I really like Connor McDavid. He'll probably go to being one of my favorite players in the history of the game if he does the same thing. You're not going to win a. It's the same thing Trotz told uh, Ovechkin. You're not winning a cup uh, without committing to both ends. That that's why I don't want to give it to McDavid again. Where I think there's been other players, including Dre, on his own team that 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 do so, that control the game more in an overall facet um, than Connor McDavid does. But for me, I have to go with how good he did in Florida. My favorite, honestly, has been Huberdeau. Jonathan Huberdeau has been good his entire career, but he went from being a really good player to just being an elite great player this year yeah. when Florida needed it most. So you, so you would say that he should win the Lindsay? Yeah, because he also, to me, also is good on both ends, which Connor McDavid does not have that factor. I think McDavid's gotten better defensively. If you look at his, he's gotten like, better. He's still ba- like it's more. When you improve to me from being bad, you have to get good first before I respect your defense, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that, like, he's, like, Bergeron level, which, like, not many people are. But, like, his face-off percentages have gotten better. I mean, the thing with Huberdeau, I I still think he's underrated because nobody ever talks about him. And, like, he could win the Art Ross this year, for all we know. Like, he's close. Like He is close to it, yeah. Yeah, he's a good he's a good player. I've been saying for the past two years how underrated him and Barkov are because they never get talked about ever. And I think that's because they're in a small market team. Like a lot of people will probably think like, oh, there's hockey in Florida. Like you can't. It's hard to picture We're that. Also, in the smaller market team in Florida, that's the problem because everybody yeah that too Florida hockey that, thinks of the Lightning and doesn't think of the Panthers, even though the Panthers are better than the Lightning this year. People yeah. are still thinking about the Lightning. <laughs> And not thinking about the Panthers because of the track record of their last couple seasons. Back chance, like yeah. you know, they're 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 in Champa Bay with like you know Brady going down there and it just give exposure. Um, I mean, I could I could see Huberto getting the Lindsay, but I guess also at the end of the day, it's hard for us to to gauge on it because that's the players that pick but, that. I mean, yeah. for me personally, like. You could definitely go with a couple guys. I would probably still pick McDavid for Lindsay just because I still think he's the best player in the world. Um, it's just that he's on a dookie team. Like, I mean, I guess I guess they're not like bad, but like I just don't Woodcroft, I like how he's got them playing, but the problem is you can't coach what you don't have. Yeah, I just don't trust the go very far. Like and they'll probably maybe win that series unless Quick goes back. 2012 self um those years Mark Patterson really steps up yeah yeah I get what yeah you're like I just I just don't like the Oilers goaltending they're missing people and they're missing a number one defenseman and well, for, me, for me I mean you don't have to agree with this but for me their best goaltender barely is played like if when I I cover the AHL too so I've watched a lot of NHL hockey Skinner's been good for Bakersfield, also knows Jay Woodcroft. When he's been up, he's been better than Mike Smith has this year, minus the last six games Mike Smith played that he's actually been sharp in. But um, to me, if you have a young goaltender showing progress, why are you keeping two old guys in? You could just let one old guy platoon with the young guy, and right. then if he takes the reins, go that way. Like, like the thing that annoys me the most about teams is when it seems like they work backwards, and I see it a lot because my team does it consistently, where the Oilers look like they work backwards, where it's like, well, let's just wait because we have some old guys here that can be good enough, and it's like, yeah, well, why do you want to settle for good enough? Like, you might have right, you want, this guy, yeah. even if Stuart Skinner's not a fantastic goalie his entire career. We talked about it before the show. Uh, Evan, like, how many guys have we seen just hit lightning in a bottle for a season for somebody? Crazy. And that's so, like, that's why you should just ride with him. We already know what Miko Koskinen is. We already know what Mike Smith is. Right. Like, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. A, a friend of mine was telling me that the Oilers' best goaltender is their AHL guy. So I, I don't know for sure. I don't really keep up with the a- AHL like that. But, um, anyways, um, Hart is another one that's like super hard to call. Like, 
I mean, if Matthews misses the rest of the regular season, you kind of have to like wipe him out of that award. But from what I was reading, they're only sitting him for a few games out of uh, precautionary stuff. But I mean, if he if he hits that sixty goal plateau, it's kind of hard not to give it to him. And he's had such a terrific year. He could win the Lindsay too. I mean, it, it's... he could win the above. For me, I think it's just the way I look at things. Like I love watching the offensive dynamos, but like when I played and i mostly played roller hockey because i freaking suck at ice hockey but uh that's it's hard to see it's so uh hard. yeah that's but that's beside the point um i was never great at one thing so like i always admire the players that are very good on both ends where i love watching the office of dynamos but that's why i really liked when ovechkin listened to trots and bought in and i admire him for that because that's what made him from being fantastic as offense to being fantastic as a whole and I think when McDavid buys into that, he's going to be even better. It's not that he's not great already. Yeah. It's just his greatness is going to be potentially the by far the best of all time because he's also going to be a B-plus guy on defense plus an A-plus, plus, 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 plus. I don't think he'll be as good as Gretzky. No, well, yeah, maybe. It depends, though, because Gretzky also thinks 8,500 people in the league right now are significantly better than him. Like, if you ask Gretzky, he'll be yeah, like, well, he's oh, like, he's super humble, though. That's yeah, different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like he's like oh, I'm not better than this guy. Oh, this guy's way better. Yeah, I, I yeah his, his accolades are just too insane to ignore. But any any anyways, um, I mean the heart could go to McDavid. The heart could go to Johnny Gaudreau. Like the heart could go to Shosturkin. Like it, it just Uberdo even too. Yeah, 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 that's true. I I, I want to say Matthews by like a slim slim margin, but like tomorrow I could have a different. I said also since he's been in there in the past. I feel like once you win one. You're always yeah. like in people's minds. And the fact that he's still been really good and is kind of more in the Huberto effect of being great on both ends. Yeah. It depends kind of how the voters look at it. I feel like he's still going to get some votes for it. I don't yeah, think he will. He will. It's going to be very like evenly. It's, it's going to be hard. I mean, that might come down to like the very last game of the season. Like I said, if Matthews doesn't play the rest of the year, I feel like you kind of have to take him out of the voting. And, I mean, Johnny Gaudreau has the most even strength points with, like, 85 or something like that. I mean, he's been impressive. Well, I wouldn't find Johnny. Johnny would probably be my favorite person to win just because he's our local area product. So, like, right from around where I'm from is where Johnny Gaudreau – Is he from the Philly area? Yeah, yeah, he's a local oh, area. I didn't know that. Yeah, he's a local area hockey product. So, if he's able oh, to become cool. the hard trophy winner, that would just be cool for my area. So, he's the guy I'm rooting for the most. Yeah. Uh, but – um. I would also not mind seeing if Jonathan Huberto gets, but yeah, honestly, yeah, I'll just say Goudreau just because that's the guy I'm rooting for. The most. So yeah, it's it's close. You're splitting hairs with like five people, um, and then the Norris, literally a two person race. That one's a little easier yeah. to decide because you have McCarr, you have Yossi. I mean, McCarr, twenty seven goals, fifty seven assists, eighty four points. His plus minus is insane at a forty eight right now. Uh, six game-winning goals, 102 blocks, 42 takeaways. And then you have Yossi, who has 20 goals, 69 assists, 89 points, plus minus 16, two game-winning goals, 122 blocks, and 45 takeaways. Like, for me, like, again, you're almost kind of splitting hairs between the two. I would lean towards Yossi just because, one, his team around him is not as good as Makar. So I think Yossi is more of an effect on his team. And that's another one that could win the heart. Honestly, like he can win Norris and Hart, and maybe even Lindsay, but I don't, I, I don't think he'll win the latter two. Um, but I, I would give the Norris to him, um, just because of just him having twenty more blocks and just him, like I don't know, like, again, just him having more of an effect on his team than McCarr. I mean, McCarr is probably the most entertaining defensive player to watch. The way he skates is just so insane, like just breaking ankles and just cutting on a dime. Yeah. I mean, they're they're both ridiculously incredible players. I, I would give a slight, slight edge to Yossi. I would too also because I think Cal McCarr is going to win countless Norris awards. So I don't think you have to rush to yeah. give Adam Fox or Cal McCarr more Norris awards because I think Adam Fox and Cal McCarr you're going to see in the Norris award yeah. for years to come. Where right. Roman Yossi ain't getting any younger and he's still doing it as good as he did when he was younger. So the yeah. fact that he's still able to do that and right. stepping up, like you said, for a team that doesn't have one of the best defenses ever assembled. Uh, 
where that that also factors in where where like yeah i know from name brand like there's some of the jacks there's the, the jack johnson's mixed in and others in colorado but the thing is when you have bednor as your head coach he figures out the way to get the best out of somebody that looked like they were washed for two years. Like you could have anybody seemingly go into Colorado and it's like, okay, cool. You have to do X, Y, and Z. And then they'll look like a great role player. If they haven't been good for the last five years. Yeah. yeah. Like, like that's that. So it's kind of different when they're there, but I would go with Yossi similar to what uh, you it's said. Those, it's those two. It's yeah. I, mean, I, I, it, an argument that one of those two is the best defensive player in the world. I mean, Hedman's still right in that conversation, and Adam Fox isn't far behind. There, yeah. There's there's a lot of good guys. And but Sider's yeah. going to be up there. In the yeah, season. Sider's good. Yep, Sider's I was going to say he'll win one. He'll win one within the next like five years probably. Um, and then the Vesna, like we both, yeah, everybody it's knows it's just her. Yeah, I don't know what the no. voters are looking at if it's not. He should he should sue the voters if he doesn't win it. I mean, that dude's <laughs> been a monster. Like, I I couldn't believe how good he's been this year. Like, I was not expecting that. Uh, and and I tell you what, look out for more of Sorokin next year. The other New York goalie, like Sorokin, mm-hmm. had an awesome year this year. Um. So, uh, anyways, um. Rocket Matthews will win that. He's at 58 goals. Yeah. He'll probably come back in and play soon. He'll get 60 goals at least. I mean, Matt, Matthews is going to be that next all-time great goal scorer. I don't know if he'll flirt with 800 goals like Ovi, um, but I, I could see Matthews getting to like at most like 700-ish, um, barring any injury or changes of the yeah, game or stuff yourself, like that. Dude. I mean, his wrister is just so freaking insane and. I'm blown away by how good he's done this year. It's just too bad he's on a terror one and done again in game seven, like they do every year. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I just feel bad for him being on the leaves. I'm like, man, that's so yeah. first team. <laughs> like <laughs> but the last, uh, the last awardee money that I think is up for debate because I, there's a couple of people. I don't think it's up for the biggest debate because there's a couple of guys that I think just stand ahead of how good they play defensively this year while being great offensively. And it could just go to Sasha Barkoff again. But, oh, uh, are you talking about Selkie? Yeah, for this one, who would you lean towards for the Selkie? Because this year, uh, there are a lot of guys. Even Anton Lindelko went to Team Selkie as a rookie. Oh, yeah. like, there's, a, there's a lot of guys that yeah. uh, that you could put in there. Because Lindell as a rookie has played good enough defense, in my opinion, yeah. to even be in that conversation it, as a rookie. It's hard. I feel like the Selkie's always difficult because one, like eye testing kind of award. And like I would love to talk to the hockey guy eventually. Like he's one of my favorite YouTubers. I'm sure you've heard of him. Like, yeah, yeah, I watch him. Yeah. Single game of every single team. I'm like, dude, I don't know how you have time to do that. And he has a wife and three kids. Yeah, like, I, I don't- always do multitudes like my thing is i try to watch 10 to 20 from at least each team in each league uh, I, I can't i can't do that i don't have enough time yeah, i do uh and then the teams that are just as i typically don't watch as much like, yeah like like i'll, I'll watch like, i'll watch mostly caps and like a little bit of like other games depending on like who plays who and stuff like that or like if i'm really bored or if the caps are getting blown out See, or, i watch a lot of games like i watch hockey like like that's why, like if I get married, somebody they have to also like hockey because I would be. Oh, yeah, that'd be hard. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like I would be yeah. divorced really quickly because I would just. Be, like, so, <laughs> yeah, so what are, what I don't know how the hockey guy still married. So, but anyways, so what, are, um, what are we doing tonight? Uh, oh, I'm not nothing. I'm watching these games. Yeah, uh, not, oh, nothing for the hundred ninth and or hundredth ninth. Yeah, and yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, anyways, uh, so like I feel like the selkie is just hard to like really gauge. I think that one you really have Agreed. to. Dive into the advanced stats and all that. Well, for me, the guy I like from my site because I watch a lot of Edmonton games because people I've shown it on the um, th- wherever the hell my tablet is. I've shown it on uh, the broadcast before. I I have obviously my favorite teams, but I also have my favorite players. I just love following. And Dre Leon Dreisaitl reminds me of an in his prime Anzi Kopitar. Like he's just that good in the offensive zone, and also I loved watching Anzi growing up too. But like that good in the defensive zone that he kind of controls the whole game where I would say the best all around player on Edmonton is Leon Dreisaitl. The best, of, the best player is obviously Connor McDavid because he's a hockey God, but like the best yeah. guy that controls both sides is not Connor McDavid. That That's Leon Dreisaitl. 
And I wouldn't be upset if he gets it uh, again because I think he would deserve it. Uh, Liddell, even though he's a rookie, he's probably not going to get the respect he deserves. But a rookie coming in and playing that good of defense, right? Uh, he deserves some recognition. And then Sasha Barkov could easily just get it again. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a couple guys in there. I mean, Bergeron is in the running like literally every year. Yeah. Um, and I mean, with good reason. I mean, his face-off numbers are pretty sick. Um, I mean, me personally, I. Uh, I was going to say Kopitar, but they might not give it to him because he's a minus 10. That's the only it, – it's it's so hard. I keep tossing and turning between people, honestly. Like, I mean, uh, I really don't know. Because, I mean, I like that Kopitar blocks a lot of shots. I like the way that he, like, strips the puck a lot. That's why like, I like uh, Dre. That's why he reminds me of Kopitar because Dre seemed to honestly – like that's why I would love to get to interview Leon Dries or somebody because it seems like he emulate like it seems like he probably still watched Anzi Kopitar growing up by how much he emulated his game. Like I wouldn't be surprised if he watched him grow because like a lot there's a lot of similarities when you watch. Yeah, him. there are some similarities. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I mean Drysdale's no doubt better offensively than Kopitar. Oh like, yeah, no yeah, doubt. Kopitar's more limited offensively, but that's why it's that's why it's freakish when he gets those eighty point seasons because he. Isn't is is good skill hands deep wise as Dre, but he just knows how to get to the net front, knows how to get to his one timer position. Um, so yeah, 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 I agree with that. The offensive guy, I would give favorite to, but defense wise, I think they're both even in the same. So you, so you would get, you would give the Selkie to um, um, Drysaddle. Yeah, I would say dry sidle with my second because I like even if you look at oh his my numbers, gosh, he has seventy takeaways. Yeah, his numbers are skewed if you look at just his plus minus because he's on Edmonton. So like, I don't care about like like it, like if you're on a team that your plus minus is an accurate stat because you're on a team that actually helps and gathers together like Edmonton's been doing their last couple of games, especially the last game against the Stars. Yeah. If they play defense like that all season, they would be much better. But right. if um if dry sidle well, the way that he does that, that's why I give him the Selkie because he controls the game so much. He gets so many takeaways. He cuts passing lanes. He blocks shots. He stays yeah. out there after he looks injured after blocking a shot and then proceeds to block another shot. Like That's why he reminds me of Kopitar because Kopitar would look injured half of the time when he plays for the Kings. Sometimes he has to block a shot and then stay out for two more minutes. Well, like, like he's just a, like they're both kind of just those gamers where they're, they're, there's always great players, but then there's those guys that just never get phased. And both right. of those guys seem to be. I mean, I. It, it it's yeah. You're splitting hairs with this. Maybe, maybe I might give it a Barkov because I'm I'm looking at. I, I I don't know. I don't think I'm a, I'm a I'm a good source for saying that, but it, I might give it a Barkov by a hair because I'm looking at shorthanded stuff too. Because you got to think penalty kill as well, and and Barkov is a god on the penalty kill, and like his his numbers are respectable, like. I just feel like if you're a minus, you can't really win the Selkie. So Kobitar is disqualified for me, even though he is a beast defensively. Um, I might I might give that to Barkov for yeah. Selkie, but I, I I'm not comfortable saying it 100. percent So you you would go Dre, which like I I can I can understand that too. Yeah, well, so I obviously gave off the fact that I'm a little bit biased going since he's one of my favorite players. So me going with Kopitar would also have been very biased because he was my favorite player growing up. When I, which actually is story about Kopitar. I don't know if this is true, but I played with somebody on NHL and we ended up like DMing back and forth and we were talking about the Kings. And then like eventually like I mentioned how Anzi Kopitar is my favorite player. And then that guy I was playing NHL with was like, oh, well, that's me. <laughs> So, like, I don't know, like, I can't ever tell to verify if that was true or not, but, like, how much knowledge we have, because we had, like, a literally 45-minute DM yeah. on PlayStation conference yeah, about crazy. the L.A. King. And then I went to saying, oh, Andy Kopitar is one of my favorite players of all time. He's like, oh, shit, really? Well, that's, well, th well you're talking to him right now. <laughs> so, so But you don't was, know if it really was him or not. I don't know if it really was, but, like, the knowledge Probably he not. had. Yeah, but it had to be someone that was really connected with the Kings because the knowledge they had about, like, series and exactly what happened and, like, why something – like, it was definitely someone that was either him or somebody that was just, like, is a just, like, baller fan of the Kings. Like, yeah, and, like, the Art Ross is going to be really close because I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Like, McDavid – oh, wait, that that's a little bit outdated. Hold on. 
McDavid, I think, has the lead at 113. I think and, McDavid's leading in points. If I I haven't looked in like five days, though, so I'm not. Yeah, I looked at it this morning, and I want to double check because uh, sometimes it doesn't like update. Um, yeah, McDavid's at 113. Huberdeau's at 111. Gaudreau's at 108. Drysdale's at 106, and Matthews is. At, we're gonna have a lot of hundred point mm-hmm. in a while, like. Yeah, this season has been a season for offensive dynamos. Three, That's for four or five. Why we'll, we'll probably have at least seven hundred point guys. Kachuk's at ninety nine. Marner's at ninety five. Kaprizov's at ninety four. Oh, Kaprizov could even get an MVP MVP vote that's or two. Good, yeah, that's a good point. He probably should get a couple. Yeah, it's there's like, like I was saying at the beginning of the show. Like there's so many awards that are like very very close between multiple people except for the Vesna. that's the only yeah, one where like that that's yeah. an absolute 100 <laughs> percent clear winner unless yeah. you're mentally challenged like that's the only <laughs> that's the only one that's like cut and dry like there you go there's your Vesna. they, they could have handed it to him like three months ago here you go no yeah he, i think i think mcdavid will hold it just because of how nasty he is i think he'll hold it at 113 um i mean it, it's going to be close between him and Huberdo and Gaudreau, but McDavid, I think, will hold it down the end. Um, and it all it also helps that his division. Well, I guess. Oh wait, I keep forgetting Johnny Hockey's in that division too. Well, that, that Pacific division sucks. Like that's why I thought the Kraken would slide in the playoffs as like a wild card team and get bounced quickly because I was like, oh, like their defense and goaltending don't look yeah. too too bad, and then they just they just didn't bad. Do it, yeah, they just. I mean, yeah, and, I and, still. I still think with Veneers and the team they're forming, they'll be fine. I just did a video on them that I'm going to put out either tomorrow or tonight, but they'll be fine in the long run. It's just, it's, it's, they're they're like most, the hockey guy did a video on this. They're they're like most expansion teams throughout history. Not most are the Vegas Golden Knights. The Vegas Golden Knights are an enigma. They're not. Yeah, that was crazy. Well, Florida was a big part of it. Yeah, exactly. Well, they had Flurry, they had the right coach which is why I knew the Rangers were going to be good this year. And some people are like, ah, no, nah, they're not going to make playoffs. I'm like, ah, just watch. Because they didn't lose pre- – they pretty much didn't lose anybody that important during the expansion no. draft because yeah. all their players were too young to be eligible. Well, not all, but a lot of their players were too young to be eligible. eligible for the draft. And they have speed. They have the coach. Like, they have a lot of things in place. They have a number one defenseman. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know the circuit would be this good. But I just knew for sure they'd be a playoff team, and that's coming from a diehard Caps fan. So, I mean, yeah, well, that was coming from a Flyers fan, and I said the same thing. I was like, "There's no way this Rangers team is yeah. not like, like yeah. as long as their young guys play well enough, they're going to make the post." And I, I called it wrong with the Cup final. I thought the Cup final this year was going to be Islanders in Vegas, and I was completely wrong on that. Islanders just what did I they, just say in the? Uh, the, the the show that we just did in the east, I think I put Florida, and in the west, I'm trying to remember who I put in the west is the team. Yeah, well, I, mean, I, think, I, I was, oh Colorado, I, told, I think it was Colorado, Florida. I think I should. Yeah, remember. well, I just I just said I just said Vegas and um, Islanders, even though the even though Vegas traded Flurry for nothing, I just thought Leonard could have been good enough to help take him there. And I think Ve- if Vegas wasn't hampered by all those injuries for a while, I, I think Vegas could have really have gotten the ball rolling a little bit too. But, I mean, mm-hmm. we'll never know. Um, I mean, Vegas is on life support right now. Yeah. The, I think I looked at it today. They have a 25% chance of making playoffs. Islanders are obviously eliminated. The East was already, like, decided, like, two months ago. Like, here's your eight teams. Like, here's here's who's going in there. Um, I mean, I'm not going to make a cup prediction now. And, you know, like I was saying to you earlier prior to the show, like I'd love to come back on soon once the regular season's done and we'll make our picks and everything. I'm going to, I'm going to do a bracket. Um, I'm sure you guys will probably do that again too. That's always fun. Yeah. Those are cool to do. And, my and then sleepers, uh, the Rangers just to throw it out. And that's, coming yeah, from the that's mine too. My sleepers, the Rangers. Right, right. Yeah. Rangers are a dark horse. Yep. I agree. They're absolutely dangerous. The only thing that's kind of concerning is they don't have a whole, whole lot of experience, but exactly. they're dangerous, man. They are, I mean, Carolina isn't, I, I wouldn't consider Carolina a sleeper. I mean, they're they gotta be a front runner, but my only concern is how long is Freddie Anderson gonna be out for? They're not gonna know till sometime next week. Um, on the West, I just get this feeling that Nashville could potentially go on a run. 
Um, I like what they have over there, but I mean, it's hard to say. And you, you got to really think who's going to win the president's trophy. Cause chances are, if you win that, you're not going to win a cup. Um, just by whatever the weird superstition weird. behind that, that have yeah, actually come to fruition statistically somehow as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's strange. And I mean, it's either going to be the avalanche or the Panthers that are going to win that. So I mean, if you're a fan of either of those two teams, you honestly kind of want your teams to lose a couple of games just so you don't win yes. it. Yeah, like I'm, I'm happy the Capitals are, didn't win that this year. I mean, it's like touching that one trophy too after the uh, conference finals. That's another um, comparison to uh, that as well. But, uh, but yeah, you went out for a second. But it's also like touching the uh, one trophy. I can't remember what the conference finals trophy is. But the Wales and yeah, uh, whatever, whatever it's it something is. Something else, yeah. Yeah, when you lift that up, most players don't lift that up because the Capitals the touched it. <laughs> they, yeah, they yeah. touched it. Other teams, other teams have, but like some players definitely uh, go by that. I, I, but anyway, I, uh, e money. I got to get running. But oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I definitely want to have you on. Um, again soon and, and and as much as possible honestly going forward whenever you have free time because i didn't realize you wanted to be on as much as you want to be on so i definitely try oh, yeah to for on. a little bit there i mean it's i mean we're all adults it's hard to set things up and i was coaching for a while and that ate up so much of my time especially in february february was like the busiest month of my with like mine was march mine was march I yeah was well we had like three big swim meets that month and it, it was a lot but it was worth it it was a good time but uh Anyways, man, I'll let you go. I'll uh, hit you up in a couple days, and hopefully it could be like me, you, Perlo Steel. Um, yeah, but did you have Ray anywhere – I don't know if you had a channel space you want anyone to recommend to follow so you can share that out so people follow you where uh, you want – like if you want anyone to follow you anywhere, I always give people the opportunity to shout out their stuff. Right. Um, I'm all right, so. Okay. Yeah. All uh, right, man. Well, you have you have fun hooping it up. Uh, by the way, Embiid yeah. had that nasty shot last night. Yeah, that was good. But everybody, have a great, safe, and pleasant day. I really thank you, Money, for joining us. It's going to be fun talking about the playoff preview when we get to have him on. Hopefully, with Pirlo and or Steel or both, uh, if Skype feels like working, since technology can be a bitch oh, sometimes. That sucks. But yeah, peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please can subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate you guys' love and support this far. Enjoy the rest of the hockey season.